In this video, let's learn to use form and input component to display and collect data. So in order to submit data back to the server, whether we're dealing with traditional web applications or Blazor applications, we need to use some sort of forms. Traditionally, these forms and form fields are implemented with traditional HTML form fields like this with form elements and input elements and a submit button. Here, because Blazor is component-based web application framework, therefore, instead of just using plain HTML elements, Microsoft has some built-in components for us to use. Instead of using plain HTML form, here in Blazor, we can use edit form. Right, so added form is a built-in component which has a lot of functionalities taken care of for you. And instead of using all kinds of input HTML fields, we have input text, input number, input checkbox, and a whole bunch of other input components that are built in for us to use inside the added form component. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to use these components together in order to create a form to display data and collect data. And then in future videos, we're going to learn about submitting the data back to the server. So let's jump into Visual Studio and get started. We're in our Visual Studio and we're looking at this added server page component or rootable component. We are going to place our added form component right here. So we can remove this and we can start using our added form component. Okay, so this is a built-in component. You can see IntelliSense already telling us it's coming from Microsoft.ASP.NET Core component of forms. We're gonna use this edit form component to represent the HTML form. Eventually, it's gonna generate a plain HTML element, but by using this, it's going to save us a lot of energy for a lot of different things like data validations and all those of other things. So let's start using this edit form component. So we're gonna close that. And for the edit form component, so what are we editing? We're editing data. So here we're gonna specify the data context for the edit form. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the model attribute here to specify the model object for the form in order to say, hey, this form is gonna work with this data, right? So here, we're gonna specify the server. I think we deleted something that could be necessary, so let's copy this and revert this back to what we had before. You see this if statement? We're gonna actually keep the if statement here so that we know that when it comes to the edit form, the server is not null. And then inside the edit form, we're gonna have special input fields. Like I mentioned here, we're gonna use special input components to replace the regular input element. So here, for example, we are dealing with the name field and we can use input text because the name is a text. And for now, we're gonna display the data from the server object. And the way to do that is to use this server attribute here so at sign bind value so remember this is a capital v if you use a lowercase v it's not going to work at sign bind capital v value and this is going to bind to our server dot name and we're going to have next field which is city so we're going to say dot city we're going to bind the city property to the input text and again, over here, we're gonna use input checkbox, right? So this is going to bind to the server dot is online, right? Because the is online is a Boolean and the checkbox can be used to work with a Boolean property here. If we have all of this and if we run our application now, let's go to manage servers, click on edit. And now we have an input box, input box, and a checkbox here. So we can see that we have the data properly populated. Click on the close button, check the number two. So we're two Toronto and it's checked. Number three is offline, so it's not checked. So it looks like everything is working. So now we're gonna use bootstrap classes in order to represent the forms correctly. So let's go to bootstrap 
and go over here click on document and let's scroll down to forms over here and form controls okay so we have different ways to uh, formulate it so you can read through this but i have prepared my code so i'm going to copy and paste that over all right here is my prepared form views layout with bootstrap and we have one row and two columns with different size and here's the label so for this one we're going to use name and we're going to move this input tax over here okay. and we're going to duplicate this for the second field which is city and here it's going to be city so let's remove this and finally, let's also duplicate this. Here we can say online, and we're gonna change this one first to input checkbox. And this one is going to be is online, and we can remove this down here. Now we need some CSS classes for the input component. Class and form control, and we're gonna copy this and paste it over here. And for this input checkbox, we're gonna use form check dash input here and let's do a hard reload and see how it looks like all right let's go to manage servers click on the first one and we have everything populated correctly we have our uh, css styles applied properly and let's check the fourth one we have online and checked so everything is working this is all i want to cover in this video in this video you have learned to use the edit form component to represent a form and one of the most important part is to use the uh, model attribute to represent the data context right the data context for the form inside it we use different type of input components here we have input text we have input checkbox uh, if let's go over here let's try to do this and you can see we have all kinds of different input components here we have dates file um, number if we need a field for number radio button if we need a radio button a text area and select so this is like a drop down list you have different options depending on your need you can use different things here uh, we are using input text and input checkbox just for example and in your own project you can use those fields all right that's everything i want to cover in this video and if you have any questions please let me know if not i will see you in the next one